stay safe and warm and in watch. HD. Nikki Haley promised. I will not, not now, not ever, support raising the gas tax. Really? Not now? Not ever? Huh. Just 24 months later, high tax Haley flipped. Let's increase the gas tax by 10 cents. So, all right, starting to get interesting in New Hampshire. A super PAC for the former president, Donald Trump, going after Nikki Haley. This is the former U.N. ambassador sees a bump in her polling, and some people see that as significant. We'll find out in the end whether it is. Brett Baer joins us. Hello to you, Brett. Good morning. Uh, why don't hey, you morning. characterize? I, I think in that poll, Trump's still led by 15, but his lead was less than what it had been before. Yeah, good morning. I think it's uh, it's moved a little bit. Uh, there's only one poll. It's a CBS poll that shows Haley um, moving into the 20s, and she's the closest competitor in New Hampshire. She's not there in Iowa. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, the former president, on the stump says, where is the surge? I've gone up 10 points. She's gone up one uh, or gone down in some cases. And he's right. In some polls, it's stayed about the same, and he's seen an increase in the national polls especially. But we're focusing on New Hampshire. And New Hampshire is unique in that independents play a big role there. Democrats could vote in a Republican primary. Um, it is a sweet spot uh, for Nikki Haley in how she's pitching things. She has not run any ads that I know of against Donald Trump. Uh, this is the first one that targets her from the Trump folks. Here's from Nate Silver. He's a political analyst, and he said, would a Haley win in New Hampshire really cause Republican voters to rethink the race? when they've had every opportunity to rethink Trump since 2015 and have never done so. And I just want to play for you the, the two of them kind of going after each other. This call for number two here between Trump and Haley. Watch. Where's the surge? Where's the surge? They kept saying, oh, she's surging. She went down a point and I went up 10 points last week and they do a story that she's... And she is surging. And then I heard that Trump is going to go on the attack against me tomorrow. So stay tuned. We'll have fun with that one. So maybe there's a little bit more of some argumentation directly between the two of them. And that is not happening between Trump and Ron DeSantis, but partly that's because Trump's PAC had gone after DeSantis for many months before this. Yeah, I mean, remember, ahead of the 22 election, he spent more money on Ron DeSantis's head than he did on supporting GOP lawmakers around the country. So, yeah, he spent millions, uh, the PAC has, on uh, Ron DeSantis already. The interesting thing about New Hampshire is that 1996 was Bob Dole, 2000 was George W. Bush. Both won the nomination without winning New Hampshire. Those are the only two times, though. New Hampshire's usually a bellwether. Um, the thing about DeSantis is that, you know, his second choice, the voters who are going for him, the second choice is the former president. Uh, if Chris Christie got out of the race before New Hampshire, maybe that would shift to Nikki Haley. Uh, but how much would it close the gap? There's a big lead there, even with that, with the former president. I, I think both of them are kind of playing nice with each other right now. I think there's a reason for that. Maybe yeah. now the road we'll find out, okay? Joe Biden, Monmouth poll hits an all time low 61% disapprove, only 34% approve. I think also in that polling, Brett. His approval among independents was 24 percent. How do, how do no, you win a national election? Red that number is what it is a year from now. Go ahead. No, that's right. I mean, it's it's uh, Democrats are freaking out really about these numbers. And, you know, 14 percent of the people polled say the Biden economic plan helped them. 14, one, four. Um, that is not where you're running on Bidenomics. Uh, that's just, it's not translating. And so tonight on Special Report, I'm going to talk to Austin Goolsby, who's now obviously with the Fed in Chicago, but he has a perspective on this. But it's interesting to see the disconnect between the numbers they're touting and how people are talking about it, feeling about it at home. And uh, there's time. It could change. But this is really bad right now. I, if I could just point out to that point in that same Monmouth poll, it said that there's a question. Biden is prioritizing the issues most important to you. Yes was only 31 percent. No is 63 percent. What's interesting, Brett, is that's both Republicans feel that way, but increasingly, not only just independents, but Democrats feel that way as well. And they may be for two very different reasons. Right, exactly. I mean, it could be completely different, domestic versus foreign, all kinds of things. You know, when people don't feel good about where the world is, that sometimes translates in other poll numbers. Mm -hmm.
Good to Thanks, see Brett. you. Thanks, Brett. Yep, nice to see you. See Looking forward to six o'clock today. Thank you. See you then. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.